I'll make a motion for the adoption of the agenda, February 6, 2018. Do I have a second? Miss Space. All in favor? Seven out. I'll break a little. We'll now have student and community comments. If anyone would like to speak to us this evening, we have a microphone over there. You could identify yourself for the record, and we do have a three minute limit. Anybody? Okay. We will move on. I just want to say welcome back to everyone. I hope that we don't have such a small audience. Oh, you would like to speak to us. Well, I'm not sure what's on the agenda for tonight. Is there a printed yes. agenda? Oh, okay. It's in the back in a, in a book you can okay. look at. There's a printed? Okay. Thank you. I hope we don't have <laughs> such a slim audience because so many people are out with the flu. But uh, we are starting our first meeting about the budget, which will be a very interesting journey this year. And um, we're glad that you're here. We do want community input. And I will turn it over to Dr. Mooney. <coughs> Is this on? No. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming out tonight. We really do appreciate it. Um, I just have a few announcements. First of all, I do want to congratulate Manor Haven on a very successful Cultural Studies Week last week. It was really, um, it was really beautiful what they did. They studied Japan, and you really felt. And considering our um, growing enrollment, I do want to thank the board and the community for uh, not only including those positions but approving them because they have really, really made a difference in our elementary schools. And um, last year at that time, uh, I had talked about uh, the literacy position that was approved was an early literacy position, uh, pre-K through grade two, and that um, to prioritize additional administrative positions to have a second literacy position to focus on our third through sixth grade and have those two administrators you know work together uh, as we know literacy is the foundation for everything and having that additional support and coordination um, for our staff is really important um, <clears throat> again where we are right now would be um, in our non-instructional staff would to be to add another grounds person if that is at all possible especially with uh, the maintenance of our new fields and uh, everything that we've put into you know where our grounds are so all total uh, this would be about eight hundred and eighty one thousand um, dollars or so to be um, to make it clear the board at the last budget and facilities meeting was given a, a preliminary draft budget. That budget did not include these staffing recommendations and these costs. But Ms. Callahan is going to come back and she will tell you where we are just with, we'll call it a rollover budget, but it's important to understand that it's, there are increased costs which she will explain. So I will, I will turn it back to Ms. Callahan and then we can take some questions from the board. Thank you, Dr. Mooney. The budget that was provided to the uh, subcommittee of the board 
showed an increase of almost $5 million. I have to stress that the vast majority of that increase had to do with health insurance and pension cost increases over which uh, the district has no control when it comes to budgeting. Uh, every, I would say all but perhaps two or three employees of the district do belong to the one health insurance plan that is actually under the umbrella of the civil service in uh, Albany and many districts on Long Island and throughout the state of New York belong to this plan. So you would think that we really are getting value based on the enrollment, that we have an efficiency of scale. But health insurance, as we all know, is extremely expensive. And the increase this year was approximately 9% greater than it was last year. Um, pensions are based on how well the stock market does. And um, I was somewhat surprised to see that the teacher pension system, which also includes administrators and any paraprofessionals who are considered teaching assistants, that that did go up by almost 11% over last year. Uh, this year, the employees' retirement system had a much smaller increase that only amounted to about $100,000 in the district budget. Uh, we did have a large increase in technology. Uh, as uh, Dr. Mooney may have said, uh, we are looking at all these numbers and, in fact, already had a meeting with our director of technology and uh, that number is going to be pared back and our focus next year is going to be more on staff development than on the continuation of buying the hardware to support the classroom programs. We want the, the staff development to catch up. Uh, and so that will roll back that number slightly. And then salaries are all based on negotiated agreements, at least any increase that is listed in the budget is based on an increase that we're, we are required by law to provide to our employees. So overall, this turned into a budget with a $4.9 million increase. The draft budget is $156 million. These numbers overall are definitely going to be changing over the next two months, but just to let you have a starting point, you can see that the increase in the budget is 3.24%. The next portion of this slide talks about the levy limit, um, the nemesis of school districts, because it, it does force us to look at our budget in terms not only just program, but to say we are compressed to stay within a certain increase as allowed by law, unless a district wants to exercise an option to go for a supermajority, which Port Washington has not yet ever felt the need to do. Uh, we have been able to live within the levy limit as prescribed by law. So in order to determine where we are and how we're going to get to the final number, we have to look at the revenues that we anticipate for next year and then look at the formula the state gives us that says how much more we are allowed to tax folks. And then between the revenues we anticipate and the revenues we're allowed to tax, we come up with a number that's generally lower than what our budget increase is going to be, and we call that the gap. So between now and April, we work at looking to either reduce our anticipated expenditures or to increase our revenues. And in school districts, it's very difficult 
to increase your revenues because the majority of your revenues after taxes comes from state aid. So we listen very carefully when the governor speaks and we hope that he will give us even more than he uh, proposed in his initial uh, offering earlier this month. So right now, as Dr. Mooney said, a roll over budget without any staffing has about a million and a half dollars in gap. Um, in speaking to Dr. Mooney, uh, my intention for the next board meeting is to bring information to the board about reserves, the monies that we do have available to us, and um, to talk about the levy limit a little bit more, and to talk about the controller's office fiscal stress score that the district gets every year because we have to decide where this million and a half dollar gap will be made up or whether we will be reducing items within the budget. Thank you, Mary. I think we have questions. Beth, do you want to start? No. Oh, okay. Sorry. Couple of questions. Um, the shortfall of the 1.5 does not include Dr. Mooney's 881 for staffing. Is that correct? Yes. So we're really at about 2.4. Um, the 3.7 is that is that where we came out with the with the tax levy limit of 2% putting through the formula? Right. 3.17. That, that, yes. That's where we end up. Well, that, that's at and least. That's, that's based on. There are, uh, within this formula, the major change that helps to adjust that number, uh, in our case at least, is debt service. So uh, we have an energy performance contract that's ongoing. We're still paying for our 2001 bond, and we're beginning incremental uh, annual bond anticipation notes for our new debt service, and that is what brought that up by 1.17. Well, at least we get some good news. Um, on the uh, staffing, the how would the elementary uh, teacher at Weber be used? Because wouldn't that like throw off the houses and all of that other stuff? We're getting rid of them? Yeah, we've had a lot of internal discussion. Uh, Mr. Shields has been working with uh, the Weber staff to come up with a, a model so that it would, I don't have the specifics at this point, um, but I think one of the, the, the uh, structures, so to speak, being looked at, and Mr. Shields can correct me if I'm wrong, would be to have an, a, that teacher be part of one of the teams so that um, I don't think all the logistics have been worked out on that yet, but that would be done to basically um, keep the class sizes lower. Without the position, um, the class sizes would probably, if we just kept the current staffing, bringing in that particular, this particular cohort, the class sizes would probably start around 28, 29 students, which I don't think any of us really want to do educationally. We just don't feel that way. Um, and I know the board, I know you do agree with me on that point. Um, we could start that way and the board could waive its policy, but I think educationally, that's just something that uh, we really don't want to do. I will say that if it were to come down to any staffing at all, this would be the position that I would advocate most strenuously for. Again, the other piece is I do want to see what unfolds over the next month or so in terms of our other elementary class sections. Um, we're in a good place with our class sizes. It's possible there could be some room to consolidate or depending on kindergarten enrollment, but I really won't know that for a little bit while longer. So. Um, as I said, I, you know, but we've had many, just to assure our parent population, we've had many, many discussions about this 
particular issue. So we've been aware of it since really last year. Yeah, no, I certainly was not complaining no, about no, the No, no, I know you are. Uh, uh, I'm just curious how do you about, do about it? How, how, how you would use it. Yeah, you know, so would they spend 20% of their time in each house, or would they be right, one Right, and that's and kind I, of I my you point. Have to we out. have been having discussions for at least, this started back last spring in preparation because we, we knew that this was something that has to be and, addressed. And that would bring us down to what, 25, 26? About about, yeah. Which is more comfortable, yeah. although not ideal. Yes. Yeah. Right. Thank you. And that's within, that is within the class size policy, whereas the 28 is like right at the, the top part. Sure. Maybe you got to this already, or maybe this is a naive question from a new board member, but I'm curious, is it possible uh, to move an elementary certified teacher to Weber sixth grade? It is possible to do that um, if we don't need a class section, for example. If we reduce by a class section in one of the elementary schools, then we could transfer the position to Weber. Yes, we can. Because sixth grade, a sixth, the certification is, well, the certifications are a little bit different now, but um, elementary, it's still sixth grade is still considered elementary as opposed to a seven to 12 content area. Because I saw you're projecting uh, elementary enrollment to decrease, but I guess at this time you, you can't yet project it to decrease enough to be able to do that? Right, right. I really need to see what the kindergarten enrollment turns out to be, and that might give us a little bit of... Welcome, and that is at 8.30, and um, we'll keep that time. I'll now go to the action items and make a motion for item A1 through C8A. Do I have a second? Ms. Johnson, all in favor? 7-0, oh, thank you. And now we will go to item 11, the calendar, and I will make a motion to approve the calendar with the recommendation of the superintendent for 2018-2019. Do I have a second? Oh, second, Ms. Johnson, any discussion? <laughs> I'm waiting to see if she wants this. Do you want to wait? Okay. Do you want to wait? You're talking to her this one? Do it. Okay, so I know um, there's quite a few people who have been eagerly awaiting the adoption of our calendar for the 18 19 school year, and we have had a lot of internal discussion about. Um, how we would organize our calendar for next year. Uh, and we had said that we had needed some additional information and one of the pieces of information was when the end date uh, for that the next year's school year would be. So this is clearly a don't kill the messenger. <laughs> the state ed department has determined that Wednesday, June 26th is the last day of school um, across the state. So what that did for us, we have a 183-day calendar. It gave us, it actually gave us a little bit more flexibility. And so what is allowable within your 180 days for state aid reimbursement are four superintendent conference days. Our district typically does three superintendent conference days. We moved a few superintendent conference days around. We added one. And so, uh, and what that means is, although staff will um, report and have professional development, our students will have uh, a recess day. And so, our first day back for our teachers, that's always a superintendent conference day. Um, for next year in November, uh, November 6th, will be a superintendent conference day. And that will allow um, students who celebrate Diwali to have um, that time with their families. Uh, we added a superintendent conference day in February, February uh, 5th, which is Lunar New Year for students. And then um, we added uh, June 4th, which is Eid as a superintendent conference day. Um, I do just, I do want to point out so there's no <laughs> misunderstanding. It's not on the calendar, those holidays, those observances, but none of our religious holidays are on the calendar. Um, 
So even Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur are on the calendar as recess days. So just to you know make that part clear, um, but I think that um, you know we feel um, really uh, good that we've been able to make these accommodations and to make these acknowledgments for um, our students and uh, the rest of the calendar. Like I said, I think the more important point um, for some of our families is to be mindful that our last day of school is June 26, which takes us into the last week in June. <laughs> so, um, and we built in a couple of other uh, days off. So uh, that is the calendar that's being proposed and I will let the board take a vote. A silly question, but just one that's come to me. Will we continue with um, Weber and Schreiber graduation still on that Thursday? Uh, we are talking about that. We're actually probably going to move that to the Tuesday because um, apparently there will still be some Regents exams. We're trying to get the Regents schedule. We do believe there'll be Regents exams on the Monday and maybe not the Tuesday. So um, we will probably move to the Tuesday of the following week. But we will make sure that once we have that final determination, our families are given um, well, well in advance notice so that they can make their, their plans appropriately for that. So. I'll call to question now. All in favor? 7-0, thank you. And I would just like to make a comment for the record. Uh, we receive many emails from community members and sometimes some of them are a little unfortunate and we did recently receive one and it went to the entire board and the staff and I believe it probably went to many community members. And this community member was very unhappy apparently that we were going to include these holidays in our calendar and it was a very negative and nasty email. And what I want to speak to is the idea that the community member had that this board and administration are a group of weak-minded individuals and we're only changing this because we were following other schools. And it's important to state for the record that that had absolutely no bearing on what we were doing. We don't just follow people like Lemmings. And we actually embrace our community and we embrace the rich diversity of our community. and. Many times people have said that over the years that I've been here, and frequently it's that we embrace this community, but. And the thing that's important to know is that for this board, there's no but. We embrace this community, and I just wish we had done it sooner. Thank you. Any? Yeah. Mr. Thank you. <laughs> Um, yeah, I just want to commend Dr. Mooney and her team on, I'm so loud I need to step away from the mic. I want to commend Dr. Mooney and her team on, on, on their work on this and um, thank all the members of the community that came out in support of, of, of the calendar. Uh, today is a really proud day for me as a board member and I think it's a proud, proud day for uh, the Fort Washington. Yeah, I just want to echo what both Dave and Karen said about that. I feel very proud about us being able to accommodate members of our diverse community. And I think it makes our community stronger and it makes it con continue, Port Washington continues to be a wonderful place to live. I want to thank the community members who came out and made the suggestion um, not to dwell on that negative um, email that we did receive, but there was also an accusation that we were pressured and we respond to pressure. We didn't respond to pressure. We listened to what the community had to say, and it made a lot of sense. And I'm very proud that we're able to make these days work for everybody. And again, thank you to the administration for working so hard and my fellow board members. Thank you. Is there any other business? No business? Or anyone that didn't feel like to be heard? Please step up to the microphone. Anyone that would like to, and just keep in mind, we ask you for a Democrat sympathizer and a Freedom Fighter. This is Karishma Israni. 
just want to start out by saying thank you. Um, I also want to comment um, about the email that you received. Um, throughout this entire process, um, none of us have felt disrespected or anything. I think it was a very um, appropriate, very um, you know community sort of a process. I don't I don't see where the pressure was or anything like that. Um, I felt very um, uh, very respected throughout the whole thing. So thank you so much. We just wanted to let you know that. And this is really big news, and and we appreciate it. Hi, uh, my name is Randy Lumi. Um, I attended the uh, Weber meeting on uh, last week, the orientation meeting. My son is going to be uh, starting sixth grade. Um, it was a great meeting. I felt really good about the program. I think that you know the staff seemed wonderful. Principal seemed great. I just um, left incredibly disappointed to hear that these that, that, that about the size of this class, um, the preparations that have been made to address this issue, and I mean the the class size at approximately 28 to me is embarrassingly large. Um, I, I I don't understand. I'm, I'm a little unclear how that that class size allows our teachers and our students to achieve um, maximum potential. Um, I, I, I know it is certainly not the numbers that our surrounding school districts have, not even close. Um, I, I mean, at this point, I, I don't know what can be done. I know that there's a possibility of one teacher being added. I'm not really sure how that would reduce class every class size to approximately 26, which in my opinion is still too much. Um, I actually think there should be a whole other house added. I know that that would be an incredibly difficult thing to do, but I also know that the district has been aware that this class is coming, and I'm just a little perplexed as to how we find ourselves in this situation. And I think whatever can be done between now and September, and there's not a lot of time, um, and I know that you know making changes like this takes time, but I think that whatever can be done should be done because 28 is just unacceptable. I'm very proud to be a part of Port Washington in this district and all the things that we, all the, the amazing things that we do, but 28 for a middle school class size is absolutely unacceptable. discussing this in detail at the February 13th budget and facilities committee meeting at 830 and at that time we do open it up to a more um, two-way conversation if so if you can attend that that would be thank you if there's no other comments I think we are adjourned okay. Sizes are like 25, 26.